I'm Jay. And I'm John. And we're Bucket List Travellers. And today we're taking you on a walking tour of Tirana, Albania. We're starting our Tirana walking tour today at the Resurrection of Christ Orthodox Cathedral, right in the centre of Tirana. This is a really impressive cathedral, and it's actually the third biggest Eastern Orthodox church in the Balkans. That ceiling is just beautiful. And this church was recently opened, only 10 years ago in 2012. Yeah, so you'll find a lot of the religious structures in Albania at this point in time are relatively new. And that's because for the majority of the 20th century, all religious activities were banned under the Albanian communist rule. Since the early 1990s, religious freedom has returned to the country and you will see a lot of people following religion at the moment. One of the things we found really interesting about Albania was how religiously diverse it was. It is a majority Muslim country, so that's around 60% identify as Islamic, 10% of the population identify as Catholic, and then around 7% identify as Eastern Orthodox. So you can see this is a very vibrant, modern city. It's very leafy. There's a lot of high rises coming up and it's really undergone a massive urban transformation over the last 30 years since the communist era. Yeah, so by the end of the communist era, Albania was one of the poorest countries in Europe. It's worth talking a little bit about the communist era of Albania. So that started from 1941 all the way through till uh, the early 90s. Now, the key figure in Albanian history in this regard was Enver Hoxha. So he was the leader of Albania through most of the communist era from 1941 until his death in 1985. Under communist rule, it was pretty tough as an Albanian citizen. So Hoxha outlawed religion, traveling outside of Albania was banned, private ownership was banned, and anyone who opposed the government was imprisoned or worse so it was a little bit tough during that period yeah and during that period albania was known as like the hermit kingdom of europe so it was very isolationist which meant that they had to grow their own food and really become self-sufficient there were some achievements that happened during this period electricity was brought to the country, the adult literacy rate rose from 5% to 90%, and women's participation in the workforce improved significantly as well, going from, what was it, 4% up to about 50%. Yeah, by the time of his death. So Hoxha was a big advocate for women's rights. But if you read up on Albania's history, you will find that the regime was quite oppressive. Ahead of us now is Skanderbeg Square. So this is the must-visit area in Tirana. Yeah, I really love this square. It's really huge and it really seems to be the centre of the city and really the heart of the city. So you'll find there's always a lot of like performances and events going on here, always filled with a lot of people. And it's just such a pretty space. Yeah, it's a really impressive space. It's really large. And you've got straight ahead, you can see the communist era building the Palace of Culture. So that hasn't been renovated since it was first built in the 60s. And oh, it's, it's been really good nick for that. Yeah, period, yeah, I right? reckon. And then you can see the Natural History Museum over there in the background. And to our right here, you'll see the monument of the namesake Skanderbeg. So Skanderbeg was a national hero of Albania and he led a number of campaigns against the invading Ottomans at the time. Yeah, so this statue was built to commemorate the 500th anniversary of Skanderbeg's death and it was inaugurated in 1968. Yeah. This building in front of us is known as the Etim Beige Mosque. Yeah, so it was constructed from the late 1700s up until the early 1800s and it's one of the few religious buildings that was spared during the destruction of religious buildings during the communist era. Yeah, so it was just closed during that period. The mosque is used today for services and you can also visit it during the day. Just make sure you take your shoes off. It's not a big mosque. It only holds about 60 people, but it is in a very prominent position in the centre of Tirana. We hope you're enjoying our Tirana walking tour so far. If you want to see more content like this, we've got plenty more walking tours and travel videos from around the world. So make sure you subscribe.
So right in front of us here is the clock tower of Tirana. So it was built in 1822 by the same guy who built the mosque. His name was actually Etten Bay. And up until 1970, the clock tower was the tallest structure in all of Tirana. Yeah, so there's 90 steps to get to the top of the clock tower. And if you do want to climb it, it's 200 lek. So now one of the more quirky artifacts of the communist regime are these bunkers that you see ahead of me. So you'll find over 100,000 bunkers like this scattered all throughout Albania. And it was due to uh, Hoja's paranoia about the country being invaded. Yeah, so he built possibly around 170,000 bunkers throughout the country. A lot of them hold just one person. Some of them are bigger like this. And a couple in the city of Tirana have been turned into museums. This is Bunkart 2. There's also Bunkart 1. And it's really fascinating. So for 500 lek, you can go in and have a look at it, be in an actual bunker which has been converted into a museum and you can see a lot of information which is quite sobering about the communist era. This one even had like a, a recreation of the panic room, was it? Or like... Yeah, it's where Hoja would conduct his affairs in the case of like an invasion or a nuclear war. He had his own office in there as well. It was... Even a bedroom. A bedroom, yeah, it was really interesting. Very fascinating, very unique, something that is very Albanian, all of these bunkers everywhere. And if you do explore the country more, you will definitely come across these bunkers. They're just everywhere in, in main streets, in overlooking water. It's just really fascinating seeing them around. So the road that we're going along now is Ruga Abdi Toptani. And that's also known as Abdi Toptani Road. So Ruga is road in Albanian. Now this was named after one of the members of the Albanian noble family, the Toptani family. So they were very prominent in the central Ottoman Albania at the beginning of the 20th century and there were a few members of the family that were very influential. So there was Abdi Toptani who was a politician, there was also Esad Pasha Toptani who was an army officer and also a politician. He was also one of the first prime ministers of Albania as well. Mm. And then there was the Queen Mother. Yes, yeah, Sadaji Topdani. So there was a king of Albania from the late 1920s through to just before World War II in 1939. And here we have Topdani Shopping Centre, which is one of the main shopping centres in Tirana. It's quite a big modern shopping centre with familiar brands. One of the things I really love about the centre of Tirana is that there are so many green spaces like this one right here. Yeah, so this is called Fanoli Park, and it was named after a former Albanian prime minister. So Fanoli was known as a bit of a renaissance man. He was a champion of literature, history, theology, diplomacy, music, national unity, and he played an important role in consolidating Albanian as the national language of Albania. So this impressive building here is the Great Mosque of Tirana, and it's actually still currently being built. Yeah, so as we were saying before, a lot of the religious structures were torn down during the communist era. And so after the fall of communism, there are only eight mosques in the whole city of Tirana. And that was down from 28 mosques as recently as 1967. Yeah, so typically during Islamic holidays, Skanderbeg Square is used to celebrate. So it's usually filled with Muslim worshippers. And Currently, the main mosque of Tirana is the Etten Beige Mosque, and that only has a capacity of 60 persons, hence why you really need the square to fill it out. Yeah, especially on a rainy day, you need some overhead cover. So it's really great that this mosque is being built, and I'm sure it will be well utilised once it's completed. Yeah, it's going to have capacity for 4,500 people to pray at any one time within the mosque. And this mosque is being built right next door to Albania's parliament. One distinctive building in Tirana is the Pyramid of Tirana. This was originally built in 1988 as the Enver Hoxha Museum, and at the time it was sometimes referred to as the Enver Hoxha Mausoleum, even though this wasn't its intended use. 
Yeah, so after the collapse of communism, it stopped being a museum and then it was used as a conference centre and an exhibition venue and it was rebranded with its current name, the Pyramid of Tirana. Yeah, and during the 1999 Kosovo War, the structure was used as a base by NATO and humanitarian organisations. Since 2001, it's been used as broadcasting centre by Albanian media outlets, and you can see now it's currently under redevelopment. But when it is completed, it should be pretty cool because it's going to be turned into a youth tech centre with a focus on computer programming, robotics and startups. We hope you enjoyed our walking tour of Tirana, Albania. We are bucket list travellers. See you next time.